Alright, welcome back. So today we're going to look at some of these ideas of regression. All right, regression, these methods apply when we're looking at bivariate data. Right, so what does bivariate data mean? Two variables, right? Because a lot of the a lot of the methods we've been looking at are okay. What's going on with one variable? You know, maybe can I compare two groups with regards to a single variable? Right, but the the world isn't that simple, right? Most studies we're looking at are going to have a whole bunch of variables, right? And maybe we want to see we've got a data set with a bunch of variables, and we want to see are are there any sort of relationships here? All right, so each individual, so let's just, we'll just keep it to two for now, bivariate, all right, but you can, you can go multiple with this. All right, so let's say we have, we have readings or we have measurements of a single individual from two different variables, all right? And, and the kind of questions that we want to answer are, is there some sort of relationship here? Is there some sort of what we what we would call an association, right? If I change one, does the other change? Does one maybe explain the other? Okay, so the wording usually used here between those two variables, and usually we call our y variable our response, and our x variable our explanatory variable. Okay, so the, the terminology varies depending on the source, right? You may have been exposed to this idea of your independent versus your dependent variable. The independent variable is the one I'm changing. The dependent variable, I'm, I'm seeing what sort of response is there there. Right, sometimes your, your X, your independent or your, per, your explanatory variable is also called your predictor. Because ultimately what we're trying to do is we're trying to use values of this X variable to predict what's happening in Y. All right, this relationship that we're looking for, this relationship that we're talking about, the, the word that we like to use is there some sort of association. All right, so some pretty simple examples, you know, we could, you could probably come up with some off the top of your head, two variables that you think would associate together. All right, like where you sit at a game has some sort of association with the price of that ticket, right? The better seats, usually the more expensive the price. Or sometimes we have a relationship like this. Now we would have a pretty good understanding that your stress level and lack of sleep, right, are somehow related. But sometimes, so I think I think we see definitely a relationship here, right? The better your seat is, the more expensive your price of your ticket's gonna be. Right, but sometimes we may have an association where we're not really sure, okay, what's what's causing what? Right? Yeah, the more stressed I am, it might cause you to lose sleep, but but also the lack of sleep might cause you to be stressed. Okay, so sometimes it's kind of like a chicken and the egg type situation, right? Which one came first? All right, both of these examples are numerical or, or quantitative versus quantitative. All right, something like this, the age and your distance of commute. All right, these are two quantitative or two numerical variables. There are regression methods for looking at other types of data, a categorical versus a categorical, or a, even a numerical versus a categorical variable. Now, we're going to focus on this first type of relationship here, quantitative versus quantitative. So let's look at these with, with the problem here. And uh, you know if you're if you're younger and you're listening to this, maybe a lot of younger people tend to not really be into baseball as much. All right, so baseball, Major League Baseball was trying to figure out well why is that and what can we do here with our game. Well, one of the big things that people people say about baseball is the games are just too long. All right, so it looks like it. We got some numbers here. 1981 is about two and a half hours. And then when baseball started trying to first recognize their issues, the, the average game had jumped to three hours, and, and now it's actually even longer. All right, so they, they commissioned a study here, and the main thing they were focusing on was trying to decrease the entire time of game. All right, so they did a whole big study. They collected a whole bunch of data. Here's kind of a, a cross-section of the data that we're going to work with. 
All right, and you can kind of see some of the variables that we might work with here. So maybe you could look at these variables and think, okay, there, there should be some relationships here. All right, now maybe the first obvious relationship would, would be, well, if a game goes into extra innings, well, yeah, it's going to be longer. Okay, but that's a binary variable. It's a zero or one. Probably wouldn't be that interesting. Right, maybe more interesting might be, what about some of these other variables, like runs, hits, pitchers used? Maybe, maybe some of these variables would affect time of game. Okay, so we've got some ideas in our mind, but how do we actually quantify this? How do we actually look at this? When we've got two quantitative variables, and like with anything, we always want to take a look at things visually first. All right, so we'll start with the graph. Right, that's what we're going to look at first. Then we'll look at our graph and we'll try to talk about what we're seeing, identify some patterns here. All right, then once, we've, once we know what we've got going on visually, we'll try to describe this relationship numerically, and then we'll try to model that relationship. Modeling that relationship, that's, that's what regression is. Okay, so let's start with this, at this graphing point. The graph that we're going to use to look at two quantitative variables is a scatter plot. Right, you've probably seen a scatter plot before. Right, Usually we put our, our dependent or response variable on the y-axis, our independent or explanatory variable on the x-axis. Right, then we see where do those readings from each individual intersect and put a little dot. Right, then we get a collection of dots and we look what kind of to see what kind of pattern we have going on. Okay, so here's some scatter plots of some of those potential explanatory variables with time of game as the response. Okay, so here's pitchers as my x or as my predictor with time of game as the response. Here's runs scored. Here's hits. So the question is, out of these three, pitchers, runs, and hits, what's the best predictor? Okay, I've got best in quotes there because what does that really mean? What does best mean? And maybe you can look at these scatter plots and you could you could think, well, it looks like the most obvious pattern is probably here, maybe the tightest pattern. Okay, so maybe you would say pitchers, but run score, there's there's probably something, looks like there's some kind of pattern going on here. Hits, looks like there's a pattern there too. All right, so maybe it's it's not so obvious. All right, so we start with the graph. So what exactly are we looking for in that graph? Let's look for that pattern. All right, then we'll get to numerical descriptors and modeling. All right, when we're looking at a scatter plot, there's three main things we're looking for. The shape, the trend, and the strength. All right, here's some of the shapes we might be looking for. Here's how we'll describe the trend. And the strength is how, how tight is that spread. All right, we'll also look for, now we're, we're used to looking for outliers in graphs, and we'll in a sense look for outliers, but it's a little bit different in the bivariate case. Okay, so we'll talk about that a little bit later. All right, shape-wise, we know what a linear shape would mean, right? That's a straight line. If I could draw sort of a straight line through these points. A nonlinear shape is everything else. Right where you know maybe there's an exponential shape like this or some sort of curve shape like this, okay? A linear shape we can see that straight line. A nonlinear shape, there's definitely something going on there, right? But nonlinear shapes take much more complicated and involved methods, okay? So for now we're focusing on linear, nonlinear. Okay, that's interesting. Maybe we make a note of it, but then we we don't we're not really talking about those methods right now. Right? Sometimes, just as interesting as finding a shape, if I go into something expecting a relationship, but I find I could potentially find no relationship. Now, I think it's pretty obvious why this graph shows no relationship. Right? It's just kind of scattershot. Everything's all over the place. Right? But what about this? Sometimes people say, well, it looks like we could draw a straight line through these points. Why is there no relationship there? Well, think about what this means. Okay, we've got x here, we've got y here. What a, a relationship like this means is as x is getting bigger, y doesn't really seem to be changing. 
Okay, so that's why we would say this is no relationship as well. All right, let's look. So let's look at an example here. We've got, so I, I graphed the data on people's age and the time it took them to finish a marathon. All right, this may be a situation where you think there would be some sort of relationship. So actually, so think about what you think that relationship might be. Now let's actually look at the graph. All right, we see that there actually does not look to be any sort of relationship here between age. There does look to be maybe an optimal age. It looks like actually people around 40 are running the fastest marathons. All right, but we've got young people running fast. We've got old people running fast. Okay, so this example is meant to show right, that if we go into something thinking there will be a relationship, sometimes it can be just as interesting to find no relationship. All right, the big thing about shape, we always want to look at it first because what the methods that we're looking at only deal with linear patterns. All right, there's other methods that I mentioned, but right now we're just dealing with linear. Okay, so what are we in, so that's shape. Now what are we interested in with trend? A trend, once we've identified linear, okay, typically we're looking for a positive or negative trend. So let's see what those look like. So a negative trend has sort of this downhill direction, right? With as x gets bigger, y tends to get smaller. A positive trend has this uphill direction. As x gets bigger, y gets bigger. Sometimes a negative relationship, it might be called like an inverse relationship. Right? Positive, we could say varies together. So we know about shape, we know about trend, what about strength? Peak strength of association tells us our spread is pretty large. Yes, there's an apparent pattern, but all of our points don't fit that pattern very tightly or very nicely. A strong association means they fit our pattern pretty tight. All right, so a perfect, very, very strong relationship would be where our points kind of like you connect the dots, right? All of our points line up perfectly. So these are both positive linear trends. This one is stronger than the other. This one's still ob still pretty obvious, still pretty strong, but not as strong as a perfect one. Summing up what I'm looking for when I'm describing this association, right, we want to talk about shape, we want to talk about trend, we want to talk about strength. And again, we'll talk about in the future, what if we see kind of weird observations. All right, so back to our example. Keeping all of that in mind, what do we think is the best predictor? And that would probably be pitchers, right? These all have positive linear trends, but pitchers seems to be the strongest. So simply interpreting the scatter plot of pitchers, right? the shape is linear, the trend positive, the strength pretty strong. So I think shape's easy, trend's easy, especially when we're working with linear stuff. Strength is where things get a little bit sketchy, right? Looks pretty strong is how I described this one, right? But that's that's not very specific. That's not very precise, right? And what we'll find when we're trying to figure out strength, our eyes aren't always the best way to go about this. So check out these two scatter plots here. The one on the left, the one on the right, they both exhibit positive linear trends, right? but which one would we say is stronger? So just at first glance, right? you would say, yeah, this one's much, much stronger than the one on the right. All right, but look closer. Both of these graphs actually show the same data. We just played around. We kind of zoomed in on the one on the left, zoomed out on the one on the right, played around with the axes. Okay, so zooming in, zooming out. Scatter plots are very easy to kind of misinterpret or maybe play tricks on us. All right, I want to show you another example of that.